Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Kingdom Praise Ministry. Ooh. A little distracted. I hope you had a blessed week. The Lord woke us up this morning to see a beautiful day, and I hope it's sunshiny wherever you are as well. Before we get started, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father God, we just thank you, Father, Father, for all that you've done for us, Lord, for waking us up this morning, Lord, for giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength, Father God. Father God, we just thank you, Father, for the ability to smell, the ability to hear, the ability to talk. Father God, we just thank you, Father, for keeping us in your perfect peace, Lord. Father God, we just present our friends and our neighbors to you, Father God, that you will continue to watch over them and keep them as well, Father God. Everybody under the sound of my voice, Father God, you know what each and every person stands in need of, Lord. So I present those needs to you, Father. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, for things as they are, Father God. It may not be all that we want to be, Lord, but it's, it's better than what it could be. Um, it's, worse, it's not as worse as it could be. And Lord, we just ask you, Father, that you'll watch over those people in Ukraine, Lord, that you would just protect them, Father God, that you provide shelter and food for them, Lord, that you get them out of harm's way, Lord. And then, Father God, we just present Russia to you, Father God, and all those countries like them, Lord, that you would just have this turn and face to you, Lord, that you just touch their hearts, Father God, that we won't do evil upon one another, Lord, but we do what you command us to do, Father God, and that's to love one another and to treat each other like we would treat ourselves. Father God, help us to love one another. And we, Lord, we just ask you, Father, continue to work in that, that characteristic in us, Lord, where we fall short, Lord. Speak to us, Father God, so that we will know what we're doing and that we will confess those sins, Father God. Father God, don't let us get away with anything, Lord, that's not like you, but because we're trying to be more like you, Lord. Help us to be what you called us to be, Father God. Warriors for you. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, in advance for all that you're going to do, Lord. Father God, we ask you to watch over all those in the hospital, Father God, those who need your healing touch. But you said by your stripes we are healed. So Father God, we present them to you, Father God. And Lord, we ask you, Father, to touch those hearts, Father God, anybody that's holding animosity towards another, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you convict them, and Lord, help them to release it. Because our hurts, our pains, and our unforgiveness can cause other problems within us, Lord. So, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to help them to release it. And Father God, we just present this day to you, Lord, that be a, a day that you present, that you made, Lord, because you, you made each and every day, Lord. We ask you, Father God, that we do what you called us to do this day, Lord. We ask you, Father God, that you will bless the, um, the minister of the hour, Lord, that he will bring forth a word straight from you, Lord, that you will anoint him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. And Lord, that you will speak with us the word, what you want us to hear, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you will touch our hearts and our ears so we may hear and receive your word, Father God. And Lord... Let their word travel with us throughout the week, Lord, so we may do what you called us to do, Lord. And we just thank you. We ask you, Lord, that you would touch the psalmist of this hour, Lord, that you touch her, touch her vocal cords, Father God, that she was saying boldly and loud for you, Lord, that you would take away any fear or any anxiety that she may have, Father God. And we just present her to you, Lord. And we just thank you in advance for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I hope you were able to join us this morning for our Sunday school lesson. It came from Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 1 through 11 and was called Free Because of the Lord. And it was a very good lesson because it talked about all the laws and the commandments that God gave to us. And as such, we need to be walking in those laws and commandments, the directions that he gave us to do, to love one another, to treat everyone with kind, not to um, serve other idols or other gods. And when you're obedient unto God, guess what? He blesses you mm -hmm. for being obedient. And the truth being told, we can't do anything without God. And we will not have anything without God. The jobs that you have, whether you like them or not, guess what? He gave it to you to provide for your means. The kids that you have, no matter how crazy they're acting, he gave to you to develop you, to give you someone to love, to give someone to love for them to love, and just to bring the family unit together. 
Satan is the one who's always causing all kinds of havoc. But in those times, what do you do? You just pray to God and he'll make a way. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't get an opportunity to review the lesson this morning, you can go back and check it on our uh, Facebook as well as our um, YouTube channel to see the lesson for this morning. Next week's lesson is the triumph entry of the king, getting ready for the Easter holidays. And it's going to be coming from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. If you get opportunity, we view the lessons prior to Sunday school so that if you have any questions, you can send those questions to us to address those questions. Next week's lesson is going to come from um, Sister Rosalind Walker from Fellowship Baptist Church. Okay. All right. And we want to thank everyone who um, came out yesterday to help us with the outreach ministry. It was very successful. We gave away a lot of stuff. We thank everyone for the donations of the, we received a lot of coats and a lot of jackets, a lot of um, women clothes from various people, um, toiletries, snacks. Um, we had breakfast sandwiches out there, coffee and hot chocolate for them to eat and drink. Um, so and the, help, the help was really helpful for everyone to come out to assist us because you know you need more than one or two hands out there when you're dealing with um when you're trying to give out things. So we really appreciate everything that you've done for us, from the donations to your help to everything. We really appreciate it. Okay. Um, next week's, next month's outreach, I guess we're going to go back to the third Saturday in April for the outreach. And again, um, we exhausted some things, so continue to send in the donations because honestly, it's very appreciative you know, can't tell you how many thank yous we received for the things that we're able to get. Oh, and the underwear. Thank you for bringing in the underwear because that that went away as quick as we could put it on the focus table. On underwear this month too. So, um, Pastor Echo said he wanted to focus on underwear for this month. I guess the short sleeved te um, tops as well as um, the bottoms for the men. Yeah. And a couple of things. A lot of women don't come out there, but we do have some women. So some women underwear as well. All right, our sermon this morning is going to come from Acts chapter 19, verses 11 through 20. And I'm going to let the minister present his title. And I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Some Jews who went, who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sacra, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all sieged with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believed now came, came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 darkness. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. The next voice that you're going to hear is going to be <coughs> Minister Vashtar Echo with a Samanic selection. And follow uh, Minister Echoes will be Minister Michael Echoes Jr. with the word of God. Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. Tea is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. 
just to know what that says the up this morning allowing us to see a brand new day before us thank you for the opportunity to spend time in your word and your grace in your way allow me to bring forth a word from your voice use me as a vessel just use me as your instrument to bring forth the truth that you want to be relied to the people under the sound of my voice lord lord please touch me directly if they if you find any anything wrong with me remove it lord Allow, allow your grace to come fall fresh on me, Lord, so I can bring forth more people to your way, to your glory, to your, to your anointing, Lord. And please bring peace, joy, grace, all your gifts, so people know that that's you that give them, and they can be drawn more to you, Lord. All that we do is for you, your grace, your glory, Lord. If it's not of you, remove it. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Um, so the word has been, has been read by my mom. Um, I would like to start off with, a, um, a recollection of what I've been going through for the last couple weeks, um, preparing for the sermon. Um, I went through physical issues, MS, hangups, then like as soon as I'm starting to feel better about my MS and I've gotten used to like my hand being partially numb. It's still somewhat numb, but I can deal with it. I lost a very good friend of mine. Um, his name was Zach, Zach Patron. Um, and like, I've known him since pretty much, I'm not sure exactly in high school or if it was right after high school, 
who I've known for at least a decade, um, and we've been friends for decades strong. Just recent years, I've I haven't been out in like the social life in Bel Air as much, so I, I haven't hung out with him as much as I used to. But um, he was a great friend of mine, and he he meant a lot to a lot of people. And I went to his funeral just this past Friday, the same day as my sister's birthday, um, ironically. Um, and it really warmed my heart to see how many people that came up for him. And I knew it was even more people out there that wasn't able to show up to the, to the um, passing service. Uh, people showed up to, they had two um, viewing ceremonies uh, because they had to split it the day before and tons of people showed up for that and I heard the parking lot was full and for the funeral the parking lot was full I didn't even get a chance to park on the lot for the funeral I parked in the shopping center and, like further away I um I risked getting the ticket <laughs> uh, um but it was definitely worth it I, I walked through the grass I don't care about those shoes uh, they hurt my feet anyway um but yeah showing up to his funeral and it was heartwarming to see how many people showed up and it was so packed that I, I showed up early and still didn't get a seat. Um, I stood up in the back and I didn't find out until later that I was blocking the view of some people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it warmed my heart to see that he touched so many lives mm. and he didn't realize how many people he touched yes. on a regular basis. Yes. Um, and everybody, everybody that knew him knew he was the type to give the shirt off his back to clothe somebody. Um, his brother told a story of when they were both driving one day and they saw a little kid getting picked on by bigger kids. He actually pulled over the car, stopped those kids from bullying that child, and then after that made sure he got home, gave him his number to make sure he had somebody to talk to after the fact. That's the kind of the kind of person he was. Um, he lived love. He lived the example of Christ. Um, I knew he was a Christian, so I'm like, I'm. I know where he's going. I'll meet him again one day. Um, and like, not only did he show love, he didn't just speak love, but he lived love. He yes, he yes. knew that love was an action. Yes. Um, and he believed in showing that he loved people in all that he did. Um, he was adopted at a very young age, at five weeks. Um, his um, people, he, he's originally from Peru, but uh, his, um, his adopted family brought him over at, the, at five weeks old, as young as you can get him. And they took care of him, and they made sure he had everything. He didn't lack anything. Um, they showed him all the love he needed. Yes, I, I talked to him in the past about how... Um, he felt like he wished he knew his birth parents a little more, but the parents that he has over here are enough. Mm -hmm. They knew that he, he always had the love that he needed, and he showed love with everybody that he came in contact with. Um, I know he dealt with uh, feeling abandoned at one point, but I feel like that pushed him into the loving spirit that he had. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the feeling of feeling lost at point made sure that he didn't make, he made sure that nobody else felt lost around him. Um, and I just want to thank God for accepting one more great person because the, the best ones go first. So what's that saying about me? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I can't help but um, just think back to many times over, all the times that we spent together just um, dancing and just having fun like we always had a whimsical spirit around us um we um like me i took over the dance floor and he would be the like if he's not dancing he's bouncing he's either <laughs> like he's either party mode or protection mode and his um his actual um ceremony was based off of always someone's bodyguard and that was him he was always mm -hmm. looking out for somebody mm -hmm. um ironically he was he worked in security and he was actually up for promotion. He was just being promoted, like going to be this week, as mm. from what I heard. Um, and he had so much life to live. He was only 30 years old, um, but he lived a very loving life. Mm. Um, 
and it showed like not everybody that knew him was at the funeral. That's there was two ceremonies before that, and we had uh, uh, you would think a senator had passed the line of cars going mm -hmm. from the funeral home to to the actual burial ground. I counted at least twenty motorcycles because it was part of the motorcycle crew, um, Latino. Um, I forgot the exact name of the crew, but they um, they loved each other. They were a family of their own. And then he had Taijutsu. He was a martial arts mm. group. Uh, he had uh, the party crew in Bel Air. Everybody that meets <laughs> out, and like it was it was a packed house. Um, There's at least twenty to thirty motorcycles, followed by sixty cars, sixty plus cars. Mm. And like you, like I said, you think a senator had passed with all the people that showed up for him. Um, he lived his passions, his Harley motorcycle. Um, it was the L A M A Motorcycle Club. He um, believed in, he he was into art, into music, into boxing, Brazilian jiu jitsu, and painting his miniatures. I didn't know that. Um, I wish I'd known that because I'm into painting myself, a little artwork myself. Um, and I can't say thank you enough for knowing him. And I, uh, he. His passing made me realize I need to reach out more myself. I need to be more of a friend to the people that I call friends mm -hmm. and build more stronger relationships with people. Because um, at the end, that's all that really matters. Nobody's going to, at the end of the day, you're not going to feel like, oh, I should have bought a bigger TV, I should have bought a better car. That's going to be like, who do I miss? Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of what kind of adventures should I have gone with? The people, with the people I love. Um, people remember who you are, but not what you really did. If it's like, um, nobody's gonna remember, oh, he was the best um, best kicker in the martial arts team. No, they believe, they remember how much he loved, mm -hmm. how much joy he brought to the room. Mm -hmm. And I, I want that to be um, something I leave behind. I want somebody to think back, oh yeah, he was the best, per he was the most loved, he was there when I needed him the most. Yeah. He was there when I was in a dark place. Yeah. And um, I was with him in dark times, and he was with me in dark times. Mm -hmm. He was one of the few friends that showed up to the um, to the hospital when I was in my darkest yes, time. Yes. Um, I know it was rough for him seeing me unable to move, being the guy that's always moving. Um, but he showed up, and quite a, a few of my other friends did show up as well. But um, he was one of the few that did, and I really appreciate that every day. Um, and I just want people to remember him. Uh, we're going to have a, um, a, a memorial little service later, I believe on the 4th at the tower. Um, but we're, um, we were already talking about having the Z day. Um, his nickname was Big Z. Um, his name was Zach, but um, he, he's not going to be gone. He's in our hearts every step of the way. And we're going to meet him again one day. Because mm -hmm. I know he was saved. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. Mm -hmm. What's your relationship to Christ? Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what my sermon's going to be about today is what is your, who knows you? That's the title. Um, because at the end of the day, does Jesus know who you are? Mm -hmm. Do you know who Jesus is? If you know who Jesus is, do you have a relationship with him? That's the most important part. Even the even if the demons know who Jesus is, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean they're going to be saved. They have to have a relationship with Jesus in order to be saved, and that's what um, the majority of my sermon is going to be about. Um, we we need to be um, walking upright and walking the way Jesus walked. And all that he did, he did it for other people. He didn't live for himself. He lived for us. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't selfish. He gave all his time. Uh, he, he didn't just say that he loved the world. He showed that he loved the world. Mm -hmm. he, he, he paid the price for our sins. Before we were born, before we know who we are, mm -hmm. some of us are still trying to figure out who we are at this moment. You're a child of Christ. Mm -hmm. Uh, you shouldn't feel lost because he always he's always there for you. As soon as you accept him as your Lord and Savior, he does enter to your heart mm -hmm. and he never leaves you. But you must believe. You must have faith in him. Don't don't 
listen to the world and um, seek peace through the, the means of the world. And that's one thing I noticed during this, the whole um, ceremony, uh, well, after the ceremony, um, a lot of people were trying to um, heal their pain in the wrong ways, going straight to the alcohol, going straight to um, the marijuana. Um, I've seen uh, the craziest thing, they, they made a bong out of a, um, a little, um, what's the floaty tube thing? The, the tube noodles. And I was just like, why, mm -hmm. why do you have to go to that? But I realized those people don't have the same relationship with Christ that I have. Mm -hmm. I left the room, but I'm like, I, I just felt bad for the people that have to um, fill that void that they feel. I'm not going to tell them how to feel. I'm not going to tell them in their moment of pain how to fix it at that moment. But I, I pray that they see this message and see that God will be with them if they just simply ask him to be there for him, mm -hmm. for them. Um, no matter what pain you have on this earth, God can fix it. God mm -hmm. can give you healing. God can give you peace. Mm -hmm. um, last week I gave the closing prayer talking about Zach. And at that moment, while I was praying for him, I felt a, a huge burden leave my heart. Like, I didn't feel that anchor weighing me down anymore. Uh, I, I mainly went to the funeral, not for myself, but to help the other people I knew that were in pain. And I felt like that was what Zach would have wanted, was me to be for there for them. Um, and I just pray that they can find Christ through this situation. Um, no sacrifice goes in vain. Mm -hmm. nothing, nothing, nothing hard on this earth happens for no reason. If, it's, if something tragic happens, there's a reason behind it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just think back to Christ on the cross. That was, that was tragic. God, the Father, had to watch his son be sacrificed mm -hmm. in the most cruel way. But that was for us. Because mm -hmm. he had to pay the price. He was the final lamb that had to be shed. Mm -hmm. Last blood that had to be shed for all our sins. Mm -hmm. The sins of the world. And I'm going to go back to the actual scripture. <laughs> um, going back to um, Acts chapter 19, verse, um, verse 11. God did, not ex God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even a handkerchief and an apron that touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left. Um... This is the only place in the Bible that I've heard that the handkerchief can can bring healing. But it wasn't the handkerchief of Paul. It was the handkerchief that Jesus blessed through Paul. Paul um, spent so much time in the Word. He wrote many books of the Bible. He, um, he, he lived the Word. He taught it on a regular basis. He was a tent maker, so he built tents during the day. People used to take a little siesta in the middle of the day, and that's when he taught. Instead of taking a break, he just taught the word of God. Mm -hmm. And then while every, when everybody returned back to work, he went back to tent making again. Um, he, he worked for Christ in all that he did. Um, during the tent making, he made sure everybody around him knew who Christ was. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we need to do on our regular jobs, on our regular mm -hmm. day basis. Um, as Christians, we are here to set the example of what Christianity is. Mm -hmm. uh, if you claim to be a Christian, you need to live that way. Yes. Um, and that's what a lot of people, the reason why a lot of people have issues with the church because of church members. Not because they have issues with Christ. It's because what they've seen, what the people that proclaim Christ say on a regular mm -hmm. basis, what they do on a regular basis. So if you call yourself a Christian, you got to live it as a Christian. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what the world sees. They see us as hypocrites. Mm -hmm. And that's the main issue with today's society. Yes. The reason why so many people have fallen away from Christ. Because they see, unfortunately, the hypocrites of the church. And um, we need to live the right way. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. Is, right. Are we, we call him our Lord and Savior. Yes, we will take the Savior. But are we actually living him as our Lord? Mm -hmm. If he's our Lord, we'll follow what, his, what he says to do. Amen. 
Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the same the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon possessed. They would say, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. So they didn't proclaim their Lord and Savior Jesus. Mm -hmm. They proclaimed the Lord that Paul preaches. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. So that demon, I'm getting ahead of myself, that demon knew that they didn't know who Christ was. Mm -hmm. So they had no right to preach in his name, to talk in his name. And the thing is, can we say that we can talk in his name? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if I see a demon, will I be able to cast him out? I, I don't feel like I'm that strong yet. I pray that one day I do get that strong. I pray that I can get rid of all my own personal demons, my mm. own personal mm. uh, issues. My the, the I know I can't be possessed because God's in me, mm -hmm. and I cannot be possessed as a Christian. <coughs> but if but demons can still give um, affect your life. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to cast them away, all evil ways. I want to be able to walk through a room and they just leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I remember when I was younger, um, there are some people that I usually get around along with everybody, but I knew there's some people that had, I don't know, I don't want to call it a dark aura, but there's something um, mm -hmm. off about them, something that didn't feel right in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that they, they didn't have they purposely avoided me. And um, I talked to somebody, I was like, so what's their issue with me? Pulling them aside and they said, oh, um, they heard you're Christian. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I glad, I'm glad that they know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they, uh, they can sense that. Um, I didn't tell them that. I don't wear, wear a big cross on my, on my shirt. I used to wear a cross chain for a long time, <laughs> back when that was the thing. But um, yeah, um, and that really opened my eyes to like, yes, there are people that are against us. Mm -hmm. There are people of this world that fight Christ. Mm -hmm. um, they don't know him, so they fight him. Mm -hmm. They feel like he's going to be there just to penalize them. Mm -hmm. But Christ did not come here to condemn the world. Amen. He came Amen. to save the world Amen. from condemnation. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I, I want to be able to walk in the room and I want to have the same power as Paul and people get saved, people get blessed as Amen. I walk through. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to give healing, mm -hmm. a healing touch. I don't need to, I don't even want to have to touch it. I want them to be in the, I want, when I come in the room, the princes of the Lord comes in the room mm -hmm. and um, people get healed just by um, association. That's the kind of power I, I, like, I don't need it for myself. I just want healing for everybody around me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I just want to um, show forth that I'm still young in Christ. I've been in church all my life, but that's only 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, people have been in Christ more long, much longer and have been more obedient. Um, and I, I pray for that same obedience to come forth through my life. And um, I can't wait to see what God can do through my life. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be able to show forth that his presence, his glory, and all that I do. Because um, we got to realize, as Christians today, we have the same ability to connect to Christ as yeah. Paul did. Mm -hmm. we, we act like it's a, 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 a past relationship. Mm -hmm. No, this is the same covenant that we have access to right now. That's right. As, as Christians right now, we have access to the same. We're a part of the same covenant. So we should be able to do the same things if we actually make God, make Jesus our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. So we have to be obedient. Mm -hmm. And then we can start bringing forth the healing that he brought. Mm. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm going to continue reading, Pooh. Some, some of the Jews who went around trying to drive out the demons possessed and invoke the name of Jesus they said they probably they try to uh, they try to say the name of Jesus over the demon and the demon responded I know the name I know Jesus of who you you're talking about 
and I've heard of Paul, but who are you? And then the demon got up and beat them up. Mm -hmm. Beat them naked. Not only beat them up, they took their clothes, beat them bloody, and kicked them out. Saying, pretty much, this is my house. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've ever been robbed. I pray you never do. But um, I remember back when I was in like middle school, the thing they did was take your shoes. After they beat you up, they would take your shoes. Um, back when I was living in Baltimore County a while back. Um, and we got to realize that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to beat us bloody. He wants to beat us out of what we consider our, um, our holy armor. He wants to beat us naked. He wants us out of our holy armor. He wants to, uh, us to be bloody, to see, to see nothing but doubt. And, that, and if you don't know Christ, that's, that's where you're headed. Because mm -hmm. that's all hell is. You're going to be beaten, bloody, bruised, and in fire, heat. Um, and when they, um, when the people of this town, they they heard, they seen what the demon did to them. They recognized. They heard not only did the demon know who Jesus was, they knew who Paul was. They heard Paul of Paul's name, but they recognized that they had no association with Jesus or Paul. So they had no no power mm -hmm. over him. So that demon beat it was seven of them. That demon beat up seven people. Seven priests. A vital age of, of their in their strongest their prime. Beat them up, took their clothes Left him bloody, kicked him out of the house. The demon made their house, made that home his home. And that's what's going to happen if we don't get closer to God ourselves. Mm. Um, that's the only way to exercise any demon is to get closer to Christ, the one that has the power of the, the heavens and the earth, mm -hmm. the creator of it all. Nothing in creation can beat the creator. Mm. And that's what we got to realize. If we ever want to face anything of this world, if we have any woes, any pain, any anything that's gonna that's we feel is pulling us away from Christ. Christ is stronger than it. Mm -hmm. yes. Anything that we feel that um, we should be lost in, the loss of a loved one, um, the loss of our our homes, the loss of there's so many different pains that can go through. We can lose it all. Um, and if you put in your, all your love and penance and physical things, you have nothing. Mm -hmm. It's all dust at the end of the day. Um, our relationships with one another, we need to be growing those things. Those are things that are actual treasures, like the love that you show, the peace that you bring to others. Uh, people are not going to remember the, the burger you bought for them. They're going to believe, they're going to remember the love that came with it. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the fun things I remember about Zach. We always went out after, and um, I, uh, after the funeral, although they had um, a ceremony, I felt the need to go to McDonald's because <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the way we always went after after a good night out uh, we went to um, we used to go to the the lodge down the road and like it's like all right so Waffle House or McDonald's and he was McDonald's all the way <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, he's the one that turned me on to put the mac sauce on the chicken on the McChicken <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a game changer <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I want to I want to um, be able to bring the same kind of love, peace, and joy. I want that same kind of um, I want people to remember me for the love that I gave. Um, like not only did um, Zach believe in showing love, he knew how to back it up too. Mm -hmm. uh, he was really into boxing, taijutsu. He was there. If there was going to be a fight in the middle of the club, that's who you wanted on your side. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, he was a big guy, um, real strong. Um, like he, he, he was decent height, but um, his, he was always built. Um, he, he, sometimes, like, I remember when I first met him, it was like, okay, we're both those guys in the commercial. I picked these up and put them down. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
And um, like we, we spent tons of time just talking about different like workouts and different things that we did to get in shape. He, um, we both fluctuated with the, with the weight. We, it's a good roller coaster <laughs> with life. But um, we, we always got close. We, we always spent time together. It was always a good time. And I, I'm going to remember those great times, the love, the joy, the peace. I want that to be my same, my own legacy that I leave behind. Because death is coming for us all, mm -hmm. eventually. Um, I don't want to be remembered. I don't want people to think back on me and only think of a bad time. I don't want anybody to think of a bad time. But just like Zach, I can't remember a single bad time. Um, other than like some pain that caused myself. Like um, I remember one friend closed his hand inside the car door. Mm. Um, that's the only thing that bad happened. But we laughed about it. We have a story to tell for the life, life to go. Um, and I, 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 I feel peace knowing that he's with Christ right now. Mm -hmm. He has everlasting, everlasting joy, peace, and he's going to. Um, and his passing did not go in vain. The the sermon that the minister gave at the very end, he made sure um, that he offered Christ to everybody in that room. Mm -hmm. And that may be the only time some of those people ever go to a church yes, yes. or in a church event. Because yes. um, we had bikers, we had fighters, we had, yeah. um, like, you name it, all walks of life in this building. And, like, um, I feel like if you, um, if you think about that old music video, We Are the World, that's all the different types of people <laughs> that were in the building at that time. Yes. Um, and, like... I, I I wish they had like almost a drone going through a room just to see like all the different types of people, all the all the different lifestyles, all all kinds of stuff going on in that room. But all of them had the chance to hear about Christ. Amen. So his death, his passing did not go in vain at all. They they saw that not only did Zach love, he learned how to love through Christ. Amen. And I pray that they get that same example and learn. Oh, I can show that kind of love. People can remember me in the same way if I get closer to Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. If I learn how to love as Christ loved. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's that should be all of our goal is Amen. to love as Christ loved. A sacrificial love. Mm -hmm. Not just love in word, but in, in action. Um Zach was always known as everybody's bodyguard. Um that was the title of his um of his the sermon, pretty mm -hmm. much. Um and he was always there. If he, if I remember one of our friends um, was getting like, we don't know exactly what happened, but he was having an altercation with a person that was running the bull at the um, at the lodge, the mechanical bull. He was having an altercation. Me and Zach both heard the altercation. We both were there before I before I even knew I was walking. <laughs> um, and as soon as we showed up. It de-escalated. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm a little taller, but um, Zach was all muscle. Um, and people in Bel Air know the both of us, knew the both of us. Um, so pretty much they knew not to mess with anybody that we knew. Mm -hmm. And um, we didn't we didn't work as bouncers, but we pretty much became. And um, Zach did do some bouncing jobs um, before he got a security job. And he made that his profession because... He, he believed in protecting people. I can't think of a better position for the man because he was everyone's bodyguard. Um, and I love the fact that people loved him, although he didn't always feel it. He came to me talking to me about how lost he felt at one point. This is years ago. I pray that he got beyond this part, but... He felt like he was lost back, I want to say it was like 2017, that, that far back. Um, he like felt like, yes, I'm doing all this, but I still feel lost. And that's something that we all feel sometimes. We all feel lonely sometimes. And I haven't heard him talk about that in any, any recent years, but I pray that it was Christ that gave him that, that place of hope, mm -hmm. that, that place of belonging. That, um, that peace, that joy in his presence and in, in Christ. He is the only one that can fill that void that we all have. Mm -hmm. 
Um, as human beings, we all will have that void in our hearts until we fill it with Christ. Amen. Only Christ can fill that. You can try to fill it with money. You try to fill it with drugs. You can try to fill it with um, owning property. But at the end of the day, none of that, after you get it, that hole is still there. Mm -hmm. You can work your whole life for a job, trying to become the best employee at that job. But once you become that best employee, you're still going to have to keep that up. Mm -hmm. You're still going to have that hole in your heart. That void will never go away. God allows that void to be in our hearts so he can fill it. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have that void, we would not seek him. Um, and I do want to close um, with this word. Going to Luke chapter 10, verses, verse 19 through 20. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice in that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Amen. So once again, we should not, I, we should not be seeking uh, power for our grace. We should be seeking power for His grace. Mm -hmm. We should be asking God to use us as His instruments on mm -hmm. this earth. In all that we do. Because um, honestly, if you want to see a Christian, if you want to live the Christian way, love, joy, peace is the way of Christ. If you don't have those things, you need to reevaluate your relationship with Christ. If you, if you make prayer a part of your lifestyle, miracles become your norm. Mm -hmm. uh, I, can't, I can't say enough, like, my life is a miracle. Amen. Um, I was told I'd never walk again. I'm standing here right before you. Um, I don't know how, how long I've been here, but um, I'm, sh I'm sure it hasn't been a full hour yet. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but um, I, I was able to stand up through Zach's entire funeral, which I can't say if it happened any time earlier, I would have been able to do that. Amen. It took time for me to get back on my feet. Lots of work. Mm -hmm. um, I don't take it lightly. God gave me the ability to do it. Um, he told me not to give up. He, I can't say it's an audible voice, but he said, I got you. When I was in the hospital in my darkest times, I heard something come to my heart say, I got you. God knows how to talk to me directly. Um, and from that day on, I, I, I worked, I worked, I worked. Um, it wasn't easy. I had to learn how to rewalk myself. Um, on, a and toe. on a broken toe. Yeah. <laughs> I was so weak. Thanks for reminding me. I was so weak in the hospital going to the bedside commode. I broke my toe trying to get up from the bedside commode. Just fell, collapsed right on my toe. Had a pin going through my toe. Had to, after the fact, they had to put a pin in my toe so it would grow back properly. But I was sitting there. It was during the weekend. So I had to wait from, I believe it was Friday night to Monday, Monday mm -hmm. sitting in the bed, looking at my toe, going sideways, just staring at it. I was like, I'm not a doctor, but that's broken. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, At least you got pain. I mean, exactly. I, I thank God I wasn't able to feel all the pain. I felt the sharp pain at first when it first broke, but I didn't feel anything after that sharp pain. Um but yeah, I had a, after that, I had to put a pin in it, had to put a boot on, and then I had a, um, I was just rolling along, and then my hands got weaker, so I couldn't even do that. I was rolling along. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, Dad, can you push me? Because it got to the point where I couldn't use my hands either. And um, I remember those dark times, and I was like, no matter what, I still felt joy. I couldn't explain the joy that I had in the hospital. Um, everything around me looked dark, but I, I still had joy because I know God was with me. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, re he reassured me that he was with me. Um, I thank God for all the people that prayed for me because I heard of like different prayer, multiple prayer lines going, mm -hmm. lifting my, my name yes. to God. Yes. I thank God for every prayer. We even had a, a Jewish uh 
rabbi, female yeah. rabbi, come to the room and pray for me. And um, that's one thing, like, I'd never even heard of a female Jewish rabbi. I, I thought they were all males, but, mm -hmm. um, and like, all the prayers, God hears it all. Mm -hmm. God hears every prayer, even the prayers that you can't vocalize. Mm -hmm. He hears the prayers that you have in your heart. He knows, the, he knows every word behind every tear you drop. Mm -hmm. And um, I thank God for that. Not only looking out for me, but looking out for the world. Mm -hmm. Each individual, he knows all of us individually. And I, I, I can't fathom how much, how much he has on his plate. There's nothing that I can ever even relate to him based off that. Like, I, I felt like I'm going through a lot of stuff on my own, but I try to think about what God has to go through on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Every second, every moment. Like, he's, he's dealing with wars around the world. He has his eye on all of it. I can't say thank you enough for your reverence, for your, for your presence, for everything you do for us on a regular basis, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Although we do not always acknowledge it, most people don't acknowledge you, which is sad. But we know that you are building your kingdom. You are building your, your churches around the world. Um, the reverend at the at the gone the passing ceremony, he mentioned that yes, it is illegal for in many places. And you have a church going on, building in all those places where it's illegal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In communist areas where they, they, they fight Christianity. In China right now. I heard that China is one of the fastest growing Christian nations Amen. at this moment. It's an underground revolution mm -hmm. going for your glory, Lord. Yes. I can't say thank you enough. Show us how we can feed into your kingdom, Lord, in all that we do. Show us how we can help you, Lord. You do enough for us on a regular basis. Yes, what can we do for you, Lord? Yes. This, this is not a one-way relationship where I pray and pray and pray and ask you for this, this, and this. Let me know what I can give to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. I pray that we all have that same prayer ourselves because God does so much for us, but what have you done for him lately? What kind of prayer have you been making? Have you just been um, using Jesus as a genie? Asking for one thing, that thing, that thing, that thing, bless me, bless me, bless me. How many times are we saying thank you? Mm -hmm. That's the least we can do. Mm -hmm. The very least we can do is say thank you, Lord. That's right. God will bring us out of those storms, but th you have to learn how to thank him after you get through that storm. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been through so many storms myself, and I, I try my best to thank him through the process. Thank him for the victory before I've seen it. Because mm -hmm. the, the victory is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Everything we go through in this life is a fixed fight. We Amen. have the victory. Because mm -hmm. we know the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We've already won. Mm -hmm. Presence with presence with absence from the body is presence of the Lord. So no matter what's a win-win. Mm -hmm. So if I if I survive this illness, I win. If I don't, I win. Mm -hmm. And I remember in my darkest times, before I had a diagnosis, um, and I was getting weaker and weaker and weaker. I, I went from being able to walk, talk, dance, to being having to be pushed into the hospital in a wheelchair. And I was like, I don't know what's going on, but if I die, I know I've won already. I didn't tell that to my parents because I didn't want them to be any more emotional, but I was ready. I made peace with it already. I thank God that he didn't take me that fast. Because I know he has so much more work he has to me to do. And I, I pray that he continues to give me focus, give me guidance. Yes. If it's not meant to be, don't let it happen. Mm -hmm. It's not my plan, it's your plan that matters, Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Um, and that's my conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but um, it is done. <laughs> um, I'm going to open the floor up to my father. I, I'm sure he wants to have some closing remarks and uh, do an altar call. <laughs> Amen. 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 We've heard so many, he said so many things in his sermon. Michael has his gift of 
preaching to you without preaching to you. <laughs> and before you know it, you, you got a sermon, and then before you know it, you're praying. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank God for his uniqueness in bringing um, I don't understand this because when Michael was on the street or in a restaurant he has a loudest voice but when he preaches he has the quietest voice <laughs> <laughs> And uh, but you, if you listen I remember um, one of the pre I can't think of this preacher's name that he was so determined that God was going to be glorified through him is that he would not show any emotion when he preached he refused to raise his voice. He refused to get emotional. So all he did was monotone and said, Lord, I don't want to take any glory from you. And when this man got done preaching, crowds were being saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I thank God today for how he used each one of us in, in a unique way. Amen. Mm -hmm. All I can think of when Mike was preaching, only what you, only what you do for Christ will last. That's I kept it. hearing that song over and over again because he actually uh, took this time to actually eulogize his friend. Although he heard a eulogy, he also did a eulogize for his friend and also mixed it with the scripture. So we thank God. I want I don't want to add to what he's done because I want the word to settle in our spirits and our hearts. But I do want to offer Christ to someone today. Um, Michael preached about his relationship with Christ and how other people run into various other things to deal with their pain. But you as a child of God, if you become a Christian, you'll have somewhere else to go for your pain. Mm -hmm. You have someone to turn to. For your pain. And I offer Christ to you today. Simply as asking him to come into your life. To be your savior. And to be your Lord. Simple. Mm -hmm. A child could do this. Trust him as your savior and Lord. He will come in. Then once you receive him. Then learn how to talk to him. And walk with him. And become more like him each day. Mm -hmm. That's the Christian life. Our desire is to be more like Jesus Christ. In all we say. and all we do. So I thank God for you. I won't prolong the moment. I just want to have a brief word of prayer for those who may have received Christ. Father, I come on behalf of those who have, may have received you through hearing this message, through may have taken this off of Christ and pray the prayer within their hearts, wherever they are. I'm praying, oh Lord, that you would touch their lives in a special way and that you would turn their lives around for eternity. And I ask it all in Jesus' name and we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. So thank you, family, for being with us once again, for tuning in. The King of Praise Ministry. We're moving on. We're growing in the Lord. Keep us in your prayers as we pray for you. This is the King of Praise Ministry. We're signing out. God bless. Amen.